Um, well, good morning. Um, I'm really pleased to be with you this morning to introduce um, a session today on unlocking cross-border credit in Europe. Um, and we're very lucky to have Kado Saar, the founder and CEO of Mefundo here, um, to talk about Mefundo's innovative solution to this particular issue um, of um, a, a cross-border credit. Um, you'll, I suspect, have met me before. I'm Mike Wardle. I'm CEO here at uh, ZN. Um, and I'm here today simply to chair the event, um, so I'll get out of the way as soon as I can um, and let uh, Kaido uh, do the introduction uh, uh, of the solution which Mifundo has come up with. Um, I just want to thank, first of all, our sponsors. Uh, we're very fortunate at the FS Club to have a range of sponsors who enable us to run this webinar program and range far and wide across the fields of, economic, of economics, finance, technology, science, a little bit of history. Um, and we are really grateful for, for, for their support. Um, and going on to the program for today, as I say, it's very much very simple. Um, I will do the introduction and then fade into the background for uh, to hear our keynote presentation um, from Kaido. Um, and then we'll have uh, about 20 minutes for Q&A at the end of the session. Uh, if you haven't used GoToWebinar before, the way in which to uh, ask a question is to go to the dashboard on your screen, uh, type in the question um, uh, or your observation or your comment or your, your query, um, and um, you can do that at any point during the presentation. So please keep your questions coming uh, 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 as, you, as you move forward. Um, just to say that the session is being recorded today. Um, so that if um, you, you want to go back and uh, refresh yourself in terms of the content, or you want to share the recording um, with friends and colleagues who you think might be interested, um, that recording will be available in a couple of days' time uh, and posted up on the website. Uh, finally, just say, if you do ask a question during the session, we'll uh, put you in touch, or we'll rather we'll give you your contact details to Kaido, um, so that if there's a need for any follow-up discussion or uh, engagement, uh, that can take place. Um, so I think by way of introduction, uh, that's pretty much me done. Um, and as I say, we're very, very lucky to have today Kaido Saar with us, the founder and CEO of Mifundo, who will tell you a bit more about himself in a minute. But we wanted to start off uh, before that speech with a poll of the audience. So just how are you engaged with or related to the challenge of cross-border lending? Uh, you face the challenge yourself, your friends or relatives have experienced it. Uh, you're from the industry or you're just curious and so the invitation is please um, choose one of these options as to you know your relationship with the challenge of cross-border lending let's give a few more seconds thank you very much Okay, so um, so most people uh, on this particular uh, audience are just curious, uh, they just have an interest, um, but the next highest number, 22, is that friends or relatives have experienced the challenge and 11% of you face the challenge yourself of cross-border lending. Um, so we've got some people with um, you know, real experience of having come up against the challenge uh, and a lot of people who are just curious about, about the issue. Uh, Kaido, um, CEO and founder of Mifundo, um, the floor is yours, over to you. Uh, hello, everyone, and uh, th th thank you, Mike, for my invitation, and thank you for that good uh, introduction. Uh, as I told, I'm going to talk about the unlocking cross-border credit in Europe, uh, uh, although the main focus is probably um, uh, uh, concentrated to European Union, still today we are looking at it uh, from, uh, from the angle of the United Kingdom. Uh, at first, about my background, um, I have 20 years experience in banking uh, uh, and in 15 years of my life I built up a bank which operates in nine countries in Europe. I was uh, CEO of Big Bank Group. I'm also a passionate fintech enthusiast. I'm uh, chairing um, largest uh, uh, industry organization uh, in financial sector in Estonia called Finance Estonia. It covers fintech companies and banks in in, in Estonia. Uh, but to start, I would like to ask, uh, what do you think? Is uh, Europe uh, large or is it small? 
I personally did a bit googling uh, regarding this question. I I find out found out a um, list of countries by the population in Europe uh, or in sorry in the world, uh, and uh, do you know where are the smallest countries in the world located in? Uh, I looked 20 smallest ones in the world. They're located in Caribbean area, they're located in Okania, and Europe. Then I turned around uh, the list of uh, countries, look which are the biggest countries in the world. Of course, China, 1.45 billion people living there. India, and third one, European Union, if it could be one single country. So, as a conclusion, uh, Europe contains a lot of smaller countries, but if these countries are aligned, if they are synchronized, it's really powerful. It's large country and, of course, wealthy. Uh, but now moving on to the uh, topic itself, uh, what is a problem? in cross-border lending. The problem is that uh, cross-border lending actually does not function. It doesn't function uh, inside EU. It doesn't function also uh, between EU and other countries. Uh, and the uh, problem from uh, uh, customer's point of view, it means that uh, the people which are expats which are uh, people of uh, uh, people related to multiple countries in parallel. They are uh, they, they face uh, heavy challenges to uh, to use uh, different kind of credit products. And uh, in Europe, it actually means that there is also no actual fr freedom to move, even if European Union te telling that uh, its main. Uh, main uh, main thesis is that uh, there is free move, um, uh, movement of people inside EU. Okay, it can be if you are mo uh, moving for leisure purposes, you are mo moving for business trip, but uh, but if you are staying longer in another country, you need different services, not just a hotel, restaurant, uh, shop. You need also financial services. And uh, there is a problem also from bank's point of view. I as I have built uh, lending operations in nine countries, I know very well uh, how difficult it is for banks to as assess the credit risk, especially credit risk of foreigners due to lack of a data. And it's really high cost to even uh, start uh, crediting the people uh, in a new country. And I also took out the data, uh, data are, uh, comparing different countries and uh, uh, what is the share of uh, foreign born population in these countries. And University of Oxford and their migration uh, observatory helped me out. This is data coming from them. We can see that in UK, 14% of population uh, was born outside of UK. In Luxembourg, 47%. And the uh, majority of the countries here, they are from European Union. Uh, going deeper into this and asking why we have such a uh, fragmented uh, architecture of banking service uh, in Europe. The root cause is uh, highly fragmented and I would say even badly managed uh, data in Europe. This is a sample of the uh, European Union, 27 countries belonging there. There are 50 plus credit bureaus uh, and each operates in uh, own country silo. There is no common data pool, there is no proper data sharing in place. And of course, uh, if, if it is such a fragmented landscape, it's difficult 
for a consumer to move from, from one country to another, it's difficult for a bank to understand these people which are coming from uh, other countries. And, uh, and uh, quite often it's not even to need, no, no, not even need to relocate. Quite often it's just also customers in, intention to buy a real estate property in another country. For example, uh, people from uh, Nordics uh, buying uh, their winter house in, in Spain or Italy. That's, that's very common, but, uh, but they are challenging. They, they are facing to a challenge how to finance it. And uh, one, one piece, uh, uh, first piece is the data itself, but next thing, what is the outcome? But typically, uh, outcome is credit score. In US, it's uh, very common that uh, people on West Coast moving to East Coast, and it's not uh, affecting their capability to uh, use uh, different credit products. Um, but in Europe, as there is no standardized data, there is also no one single credit score in place. One sample, I believe this is uh, pretty common in UK as well. Uh, from 300 points to 850 points scale uh, sample in Europe uh, up to 100%. Then uh, letters A, B, C, D. Again, one more sample. And basically, in every country, in every bureau, the credit scoring is based on a very different methodology. And of course, underlying data is different, and outcome is different. And question how to how to manage it. This this is a challenge. The only thing what is common that there is a green side, there is red side. But how to understand what, what is what, this, this is the question. And even to, going deeper from a bank's point of view, uh, to assess credit worthiness, they need to pass through multiple steps. Of course, f first step to understand who is the person to identify. And as in European Union, there are 27 uh, member states, then basically it means that the bank has to be capable to validate uh, the identity uh, from 27 different uh, databases. Of course, there are certain aggregation services also in place, but, but in general, this is, this is a thing they, they need to do. Second step, if person is identified, uh, uh, banks need to understand uh, about uh, about the cash flow, uh, income income statement, uh, outgoing expenditures. Again, 27 different countries. Uh, although we have this open banking in uh, PSD2 more specifically in place uh, in European Union, but uh, but still, how to categorize what is income, what is not income, what is uh, uh, liability, what is gambling, etc. Uh, it's, it's, it's different country by country and, uh, and uh, this is needed to do to understand uh, the specifics in, in, in each country. And uh, next step to understand previous credit history, positive, negative marks and uh, and uh, this is the field where credit bureaus are coming into game uh, to provide the data uh, about the customer. And finally, the final step is credit score. So you, you see, we, we, this is a challenge uh, from banks' point of view. And uh, what we are helping to do to provide it over one single API for a bank, that bank is capable not only to serve own local customers, but uh, providing the data and standardization from uh, cross-border countries. Uh, going on uh, with a free movement of goods and services in the European Union, 
um, we, we, we know it's, it's, it's functioning. People can, uh, can um, purchase from other country. Uh, and according to statistics, 25.5% uh, of European Union online retail market, this is cross-border. But uh, if to compare it to uh, financial services, especially banks, retail credit market, only 0.8% is cross-border. This is illustrating very well the difference of retail, uh, retail uh, purchases versus uh, financial products. Uh, I, I also took uh, data uh, about migration to UK and out, uh, out of UK. This is a, a graph illustrating uh, a number of people moving into UK. Uh, as you see, it was growing trend of EU people moving to UK till 2015. Uh, while Brexit uh, decision was, was made. After that, uh, it's going down. Non-EU was flat quite a long time, but uh, latest years it jumped up, uh, mainly because of uh, war in Ukraine and uh, people from Hong Kong moving to UK. And people going, uh, people emigrating out of the UK are uh, typically 600,000 uh, people uh, per year. Half of them, they are, uh, they are going to EU and uh, another half non-EU people. And by the way, even if British own people moving back to UK or uh, they need to prove also uh, also their credit history. If, a, if British people have lived uh, for, for a while outside of UK, it means that their uh, credit history is somewhere else. So it's not only actually an issue for foreign people. And now what? Uh, Solution, uh, how Mifundo solves it. Uh, it was uh, briefly described earlier. Mifundo is unifying uh, data from different countries into one single data hub, analyzes it, and calculates standardized credit score. Uh, with one click, customer can share it to the banks, and banks can get the data, and banks can get uh, can make proper credit decision. Also, banks can make uh, the inquiry by themselves to Mifundo regarding their own existing customers. Um, and uh, and if, if end customer, if consumer has this passportable financial identity, this helps to take own data to another country. So if consumer builds this financial identity, the data is owned by customer. It's not owned by Mifundo, it's not owned by the bank. In this case, it's customer data. And uh, Mifundo is building the relationships with the banks the, to make banks to understand it and accept it. Uh, based on this, uh, customers can get better access to loan products in different countries. Of course, also more favorable terms because uh, right now uh, foreigners are discriminated, either rejected or if not rejected, their uh, credit risk is compensated by, by higher margin. And uh, it's very useful for banks point of view as well. Banks can serve wider range of customers while reducing credit risk significantly. 
um, market as such in European Union is 7.2 trillion euros it's total bank loans for private uh, individuals and in European Union we have 45 million people which are expats or related to multiple countries it actually makes 10 percent of uh, population uh, about payments if to do a parallel uh, do you remember how, how were payments organized uh, 10 years ago maybe it was okay to uh, to to transfer a money uh, to the people in the same country okay the person got got it uh, same day there was a daily clearing or a couple of days uh, a couple of times per day clearing but if you needed to transfer a money to another country how long it took to to deliver no well, it was uh, three days or, or four days to transfer the money. Uh, it, it's like uh, it's like uh, like the same. I, I, I took took the if you want to drive from London to Greece, how long it takes? It takes 34 hours to drive from London to Greece. But uh, to transfer the money London to Greece it took uh, three, three to four days it, it was a situation 10 years ago basically it was uh, much easier or faster to get the car drive to Greece hand over money and come back now of course nowadays uh, we have instant payments um, money is, can be instantly tra transferred to Greece but, uh, but if you're looking uh, credit products and lending right now I think the right comparison is uh, not driving from London to Greece but I looked what does it mean to walk to Greece it takes 18 days and we see that even little swimming is needed to get to Greece so so this is probably the, probably the picture and uh, and of course uh, disruption regarding credit products uh, is also expected and this is what we are doing and we see that uh, currently also legal framework is supporting us European Union has uh, adopted uh, its digital finance strategy which very clearly states that, uh, uh, that uh, Europe wants to build uh, one single market for uh, financial services and lately this year the draft of uh, payment service directive number three and open date act they were introduced and and also uh, showing the difference in the interest rates country by country in, in European Union this is also showing uh, uh, so showing the pressure and uh, the blocks uh, blocks what we have currently uh, in, in cross-border uh, financing uh, what could what could happen if if uh, there are no blocks uh, if to look uh, uh, potential collaboration between uh, European Union and UK I see very clearly that uh, that exchange of data between uh, EU and UK it could really help uh, to foster uh, trade relations it helps to reduce the uh, risks of the parties so it's very very essential to um, utilize this this potential and do it properly some use cases from banks point of view as well uh, I can tell, give some samples. Uh, for example, uh, one bank uh, we are partnering with. Uh, they, uh, their interest was to provide credit products for 
newcomers in the country and and uh, this is the split of their customers and I, uh, I would tell that this is pretty typical uh, in Europe 87 percent were local customers and uh, 13 percent were foreigners and the problem for bank is that uh, these 14 percent of foreigners they are not coming from one single country if if they were come from one single country it's easy to set up a data pipeline it's easy to uh, get the knowledge uh, train models uh, to make proper credit decisions but as it's highly fragmented uh, it's not feasible for a bank to build the data pipelines with each single country and that's that's pure pure business decision for bank not to finance foreigners but if there was one api in place to collect the data from all these countries, uh, this, this uh, makes this business interesting for a bank. And as a bank uh, was interested to integrate the service into buy now, pay later product to increase its conversion uh, and also to reduce the credit risk. Similar split here, just the difference is the countries, uh, but Point is the same. Twelve percent of uh, their customers in uh, in the uh, flow they are foreigners, and bank is not capable to serve them. And uh, third, third sample, credit products for uh, people which are daily commuting uh, between multiple countries. Fourteen point five percent are are foreigners and. Uh, need is the same actually and uh, uh, finally who, who are behind it uh, beside uh, uh, deep banking knowledge in Mifundo we have also experience from Estonian unicorns Skype or pipe drive and uh, also first version of our uh, solution was introduced uh, uh, this year we have already uh, gained a uh, uh, wide range of mentionings and uh, earned reputable awards in the industry. And beside that, also Mifunda is, uh, uh, is uh, impact solution for sustainable finance uh, uh, contributing to ESG goals 8 and 10. So if, if uh, it raises interest, uh, you are welcome to, to join to, um, to build a world where people have freedom to move, freedom to be trusted. Well, thank you so much, uh, Kado, for that overview um, of both the challenge and the way in which um, the funder is trying to uh, meet some of those challenges. Um, we've got a few questions in from the audience. Um, and I'm going to first of all start with Elwell Risa who asks, uh, he, he comments that in the UK, um, you know, obviously we have a number of credit agencies um, with a good database of individuals' credit standing. You know, and just asking the question, are there equivalent sort of credit uh, databases in every country that you deal with in the EU, or are there some gaps in that? I mean, so, you know, so is there an equivalent set of data across you know, every jurisdiction? Uh, of course. European Union is much more fragmented uh, than it uh, see, seems to be or looks, uh, looks to be. Uh, we have uh, stu studied uh, data from credit bureaus. We have understood that it's uh, really it is really different country by country. And uh, for example, some credit bureaus they have positive and negative data. In some countries only negative data no uh, only negative so no, no chance to get positive because bureau is not collecting it uh, then some bureaus credit bureaus they are uh, uh, operating as private companies some of some of uh, uh, credit registries they are um, uh, handled by uh, by public sector for example central bank and Due to this, each of them has own mandate and uh, 
and um, own like a regulated list of data points what is available and uh, so, some of them they don't even calculate any score it's up to the up to each user to collect the data and calculate it that's that, that's great and uh, Dan Finney asks a question just about whether you want to could comment more on um, real-time point of sale lending here you know, buy now pay later systems um, and the relationship between using that for business to business as opposed to using it for consumer uh, finance um, Dan seems to think it might be um, safer um, to use buy now pay later in the business to business transaction than maybe in consumer purchase but you know how does how does what you're doing fit in with buy now pay later and real real time point of sale uh, from our point of view actually it doesn't matter uh, which is precise product uh, where it is used is it a mortgage loan is it buy now pay later car financing uh, we are anyway collecting the same data we are anyway calculating credit score uh, question is uh, more on the bank side uh, how it is uh, no, technically uh, done it is it uh, auto automated over api is it manual and in case of buy now pay later uh, what is the requirement requirement is that it has to be pretty seamless uh, otherwise uh, uh, end customers are dropping off and uh, also retailers they are not not happy so it has to be fast and automated uh, and uh, our uh, our uh, focus uh, is definitely private person so uh, at least this is what we are doing we are not covering uh, business entities uh, in this and by now pay later is a uh, very hot topic uh, uh, not just as a buzzword but they have real challenges uh, facing their it's highly competitive market uh, online uh, retailers they are asking from the banks why your buy now pay later is anyhow better than that banks buy now pay later so and what's what's a good explanation uh, uh, and what, what we know retailers care about conversion they are getting Let's say 100,000 visitors. How many of them are converting? And and, uh, and on the same time, banks have challenge number two. Buy now, pay later contains very high credit risk. And how to balance convert more and reduce credit risk? And uh, this is the value proposition what we can provide that uh, uh, well, banks are capable to convert also foreign people which are doing their purchase and uh, this is bank's value pro proposition to the retailers uh, yeah. <clears throat> and so just to be clear because um, uh, our uh, Risa noted um, at the moment you're focused only on consumer um, applications rather than business to business or you know, uh, business lending um, you know, <laughs> will you one day move also into business lending Business lending is uh, in our roadmap, but uh, our, yeah, right now our focus is uh, consumer uh, and consumer credit risk analysis. And anyway, if doing uh, credit risk analysis for businesses, especially SMEs, uh, in, in case of small medium enterprises, there is need to understand who are the owners, who are the uh, people running the company, what is their background, etc. So, so understanding private persons is anyway needed. So we, this is the way we have approached that, uh, and this yeah. is the reason why uh, consumers at first. I fully understood. Um, Tamsa Rubin has asked um, whether users of your app can choose which type of data the app uses to generate a credit score. In other words, has the consumer got control over um, how the credit data is used and which credit data is used? Uh, this is uh, it's a very good question. Uh, uh, of course, the uh, data is owned by the user and user can, con can control uh, usage of, of own data. So uh, if 
user opens account in Mifundo, uh, at first giving consent to make the inquiries. We are collecting the data, user can see the data what we collected, and user can decide when and to whom to share it. Uh, we are honestly telling this is your, your data and this is a score based on this data and up to you if you want to share. Uh, another way, of course, if bank is making inquiry to Mifundo, if bank makes, it means that the same customer has already given the consent to the bank and authorized them to make the inquiry. In, in such case, we cannot we cannot uh, control it. We are just giving uh, giving the data to bank. Yeah, understood. That's very, that's very, very clear indeed. I just wonder, um, you know, whether you think that, uh, you know, at the, at the moment, obviously, there's a concentration on Europe, um, but we know there's a lot of people uh, living in Europe whose credit history may well be in Asia or in Eastern Europe or in North America. Um, and are you finding that there's a demand from banks to for you to expand and uh, and uh, your operation? Uh, uh, yes, uh, depends on the bank. Of course, each bank has its own strategy, own risk appetite, and uh, and due to this, the demand is different. I al al already presented three uh, different use cases. Um, the demand was from a bit different angle. Mm. Uh, uh, what else I have seen? Uh, uh, sometimes people uh, have been asking, uh, okay, but uh, these large banking corporations, they are basically everywhere. Well, let's take HSBC, uh, BNP Paribas, Santander, they are in a lot of countries already and they have a capability to uh, source the data to make the credit analysis. One hand, it's true. Other hand, it's wrong in that sense that if to go deeper, we understand very well that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, yes, the banks, they have a capability to analyze the customer, but they have capability to it, still do it, to do it locally. <coughs> It means that you might be large banking corporation, but uh, the architecture of the banks, this is, uh, uh, this is in country silos. And uh, even we, such, kind of, such kind of banks, they have asked from us that if we are capable to cover, uh, cover at first these countries where the bank is operating in, not mm -hmm. other countries. So it's, more efficient, cost efficient for a bank to use us than try to build own data sharing uh, system. Sure. Um, El Rizzo, who's obviously um, been inspired by your presentation, um, he just asked whether you thought about using your solution to match lenders with borrowers instead of simply selling a service which is a credit score service. Um, you know, you've got users who are lenders, you've got users who are potential borrowers. Um, is there a way to uh, use your technology to match those people up? Uh, we have uh, we have developed this matching uh, engine as well, but uh, matching is based on uh, people credit profile. If, if we have um, collected the data, we have done the credit uh, score calculations, then of course the next step is to find a proper bank who is financing you. Uh, might be that you do not know it by yourself. If you're just, let's say, relocating, going to a new country, how do you know which mm -hmm. bank financing you? But we might have much better knowledge, especially if we have data about you. And um, we have developed this, this part as well. Uh, of course, at the moment, uh, we, 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 we are in this phase that we want to scale out. Uh, <coughs> Uh, maybe the coverage is not uh, not uh, not that uh, that wide as as everybody wants, but this is what we want to achieve in next phase. First phase was to build a solution, to introduce, to check the demand, to validate, and this is what we have done uh, uh, right now. I mean, personally, I'm, I'm very interested in the whole idea of how digital solutions 
can join together different cities, different jurisdictions, different countries, systems. And it seems like Mafundo is a, a really good example of that. But you, you also mentioned the Sustainable Development Goals and the importance of that to Mafundo. Could you say a bit more about how, you know, what you're doing, you think, contributes to the sustainable development or the sustainability of, um, uh, of the financial system? Uh, of course, the uh, biggest contribution uh, is to the social part of uh, ESG, uh, because uh, roughly 10% of the population uh, in Europe, uh, they are excluded from uh, financial market or they are not discriminated by the banks uh, uh, purely because of lacking the data. So we, we see that uh, our, our solution uh, uh, contributes there and these people can be part of uh, financial market they can properly serve they can uh, they can uh, buy a house or apartment in a country where they have moved in by the way my uh, colleague uh, Keio uh, she's our chief product officer Estonian citizen lived in Spain for 15 years uh, came back to Estonia wanted to buy a house here but she couldn't because uh, banks rejected her told that uh, your credit history is in Spain and uh, please come back after three years build your history but how come I need the money now I need the living place now not after three years and uh, it was good she had some savings uh, managed to buy older uh, house and started to renovate it but but if you're asking, is it like a, a normal uh, that that the people cannot uh, move, people cannot be trusted? So it's it's <coughs> it's normal. It's not nor no, normal, yeah. Okay, yeah. I think I think it's time for one last question again, Errol Ritzer. Just saying, um, do your credit systems have access to data from utilities providers, sort of water, electricity, telecoms, um, which help to show if person if somebody is credit worthy or not? Um, and I think my understanding is that credit agencies do take account of uh, money that is outstanding or owed to all sorts of suppliers, including infrastructure and uh, telecoms. But it, 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 is utilities provision part of um, the data set that you're building on? Uh, it's dependent on a on country and dependent on a credit reference agency. Uh, yeah. uh, and, uh, I have seen that, yeah, for example, if there are negative, uh, marks, then uh, this is this is shown that, uh, and it's again dependent on the country if uh, and how often this uh, uh, utilities companies they, they have reported uh, negative uh, negative mark to a credit bureau. If mm -hmm. they haven't reported, then of course it's not anyhow taken into account. But if it is collected uh, thoroughly, uh, credit bureaus are using it then then we are also using the main principle is that uh, we are collecting the same data what is usually collected by local banks so basically to give a similar situation to foreign banks to understand the people which move from one country to as uh, an asset so whatever is the best practice in in this local country this is what we are passporting well, thank you very much indeed. Um, we have come to end of time, um, but that's been a fascinating um, look into um, you know, a, a particular challenge and the solution to it. Um, once again, just to thank our sponsors, we really are grateful for their continuing support. Um, and you know, if you're interested in sponsorship at all, then please get in touch. Uh, we have a number of events uh, coming up, uh, tracing the evolution of security systems uh, next Tuesday. Uh, service resilience and software with risk on Wednesday and the question can financial engineering save the planet um, next Thursday so some interesting things coming up and keep an eye uh, on the website for uh, other events that are forthcoming um, we've got various people putting into the question comments there just saying thank you and it's an excellent session um, so my thanks to Kaido um, it was great to have you with us and uh, we'll I suspect all be looking uh, at the fundos um, continuing uh, presence uh, and success. Um, so thank you very much indeed for your presentation and thank you to the audience uh, for coming and for, for your engagement. Uh, thank you much, very much everybody. Thank you. Bye.